So today's video, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite games of all time, Knights of the Old Republic 2, KOTOR for short. This game was released in 2004 with a very rushed development cycle. And it's still one of the most gripping Star Wars narratives I have ever experienced, especially with the restored content added. Beautiful. I'm not gonna get too deep into KOTOR 1, uh, although that is another great game. But KOTOR 2 does something incredible for a game. Its themes, characters, and setting mesh so well that it elevates the entire franchise. It not only shows how to subvert a narrative, it shows us what the Star Wars universe is capable of. First off, the setting. KOTOR 2 is set in a fractured post-war galaxy. After the Jedi Civil War had concluded and the heroes have gone home, it's dark, lonely, and broken. It reflects, <laughs> it reflects the fact of conflict. Things are not okay after the good guys win. It forces you to live in this world, the shadow world, and it uses its unique art style to show the scars of the past. I love that the story does not ignore the events of the previous game, it engages with it. Something that the movies have failed to do. The Force Awakens was a horrible waste of time with cardboard characters, a recycled plot, and a cut and paste theme of a new hope. It fails to acknowledge the, the accomplishments and the failures of its predecessors, so it stands divorced from its roots. Now, Disney did some of this on purpose, but I digress. This video is about a video game, not the movies. Anyway. KOTOR 2 embraces its characters. It makes the world feel alive with them, like they belong in this universe. Their opinions matter. They have a stance on everything that's happened, and they're not driven by what the plot needs them to do. They are authentically themselves. And that's something you don't find in most video games or in most movies here. It stands testament to show how good of a game they made when your characters inflect the world that they're in. Rather than just moving the plot forward like a character like Finn or being fan service like R2-D2, these characters contend with their past and they interact with the world they're in. They're not just cardboard cutouts. They represent philosophical meaning or they represent an emotional attachment or they show the scars of the past. All of these things culminate in meshing with the themes that the story interjects. That is so refreshing to see characters that actually have agency in a story. I'm only going to go into Beodor, Atten, and Kreia because I think uh, they're the most important. <laughs> Atten is in the story not only to provide as a comedic relief, if you get to know him, he actually gives you a glimpse into some of the themes that KOTOR 2 has set us up for. He shows us the subjectivity of good and bad. He works for the evil sis before you meet his character. And you think he left the organization because he secretly hated the Sith or he couldn't stomach what they were doing? No. Not only do you find out that he liked torturing people, uh, that wasn't even the reason he left. He left because he was afraid. The fear that he would be found out for what he is. He shows us the moral ambiguity that these wars build. We're all just people, and sometimes you pick a side. Next, Beodor. Uh, Beodor really shows the trauma of the past uh, and how it affects the present. You see uh, the half-dead worlds like Telos and Dantooine 
and the muted resentment they re represent. The grudges they carry. This represents Beador uh, because he literally has a robotic arm that he doesn't like to talk about. Lastly, there's Kreia, a truly nihilistic character that subverts the narrative and then elevates it. It's not just that she's evil or presented in such a light that she's on the dark side. She manages to show her true contempt for the Force and the reality of the Star Wars universe. I'm not saying that's the way the creators of any new content should go, but it would be interesting to see something like that brought to us in KOTOR 3. <laughs> if that ever comes out. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> uh, I could go off on a million different little tangents about this character, but I really just like how she manages to put the Force in perspective and give the world a realistic, substantive source. Star Wars is not like a comic book. There should be consequences for actions. Characters should die. It's how the original is set up. There is a weight to this world. It could be a rich drama on, the, on par with things like Game of Thrones. It has the right building blocks. And with multi-layered characters, interesting plots, and complementary settings, Star Wars could be elevated to heights we've never seen. I'm tired of cardboard cutouts like Rey and Finn telling us what a hero should be. Show us what they can be. I mean, Jesus Christ. I guess the point of this video is to express how I believe Star Wars Universe has a lot more to offer than what has been given to us. I truly think that this is the direction the series should go. So I guess this really isn't much of a review, as much as it is a wish list of what I like. But I guess if you haven't played this game, you definitely need to. You're missing out on the best thing Star Wars ever made. And if you've already played it, then you know what I mean. Anyway, that's it for me, guys.